What's up guys, it's River and today we're looking at my top five YouTube cameras that would be perfect for your YouTube channel or really any social media platform. Whether you're a vlogger, an influencer, an educator, or a cinematic filmmaker, I totally have you covered with this list. I'm going to include both the mainstream studio cameras plus the artsy niche cameras that you probably wouldn't think about. So make sure to watch the entire list. So let's do a deep dive, figure out exactly what each camera does and exactly which camera is going to help you crush it and stand out on YouTube. Let's get into it. Also, before we jump into the video, I just quickly want to say thank you guys so much for all the super nice comments you've been leaving. They genuinely make my day. And like always, all the products that we talk about, I'll make sure to leave a link down below, so be sure to check that out. Also, I'm going to leave a link to a budget version of this video. This is the best YouTube cameras, but I also made a video called the best budget YouTube cameras, so be sure to check that out on the main channel. So the first camera on this list is the Canon 90D, which will be perfect for 90% of YouTube channels. And yes, I did change my shirt. This camera was made with filmmakers and YouTubers in mind. It has everything you would want in a camera like this. A swivel screen, great autofocus, mic jack clearance, a big battery, 4K with no crop, slow motion, and a lot more. Specs wise, this camera does full HD at 23 frames per second and 60 frames per second, and 4K at 30 frames per second with no crop plus a slow motion mode where it does 120 frames per second at full HD. Personally, I think that covers all the frame rates, all the resolutions that a YouTuber would want. Also, let's not forget about Canon's color science. Canon's color science is absolutely perfect. The reds are fiery, the blues are the perfect hue of blue, the greens are nice and saturated, and skin looks amazing. The great thing about Canon cameras is you can pretty much make anybody look attractive because they always manage skin tones really, really well. If you look at Sony cameras, a lot of times people end up looking purple, kind of pale, or sometimes even a bit too orange. But Canon cameras make everybody look attractive. So if you're doing the kind of YouTube channel where you're sitting in front of the camera, talking all the time, vlogging, you want to get a Canon camera because it's going to manage your skin tones really, really well. And that applies to the other Canon cameras on this list. And personally, I feel like the color science with Canon cameras is so good that you can put this stuff up on YouTube without any color correction or just minor tweaks. I probably wouldn't put a Sony camera up on YouTube without some color grading. And of course, this camera has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is fantastic. It has amazing face tracking and object tracking. So regardless of what kind of content you're shooting, it's going to do a very, very good job keeping up with you and making sure things are sharp and in focus. Also, the autofocus pulls are very smooth and organic. When it goes from object to object, it almost feels like a person's changing focus and not a robot. And that way it helps your viewers stay more in the moment. However, not everything with this camera is perfect. This camera only has a low level IPB codec, which is a lower bitrate codec, and it doesn't have a cinema profile. This camera is really made for someone that's churning out a lot of content with little to no color grading, and I really wouldn't recommend this to someone that's an artsy creator or is really more of a cinematic filmmaker. This is more of a utility or a documentary camera, but I do recommend installing Technicolor CineStyle on your camera to get the most out of your sensor. If you don't know what that is, be sure to check out my 90D video specific review on the main channel. It explains how to get more out of your sensor and how to properly install that profile. Overall, I think this would make a great run and gun documentary camera, a great studio camera, a great vlogging camera, most of YouTube is capturing content in the moment, in studio, with a person talking. This has great autofocus, it will keep the person in focus naturally, a big battery life, you'll get 4K, and you get that super solid, robust design, Canon quality colors. This is a camera that will work for 90% of YouTube. The only thing that it's maybe missing is in-body stabilization, but Canon puts all their stabilization in the lens. But what if you're an artsy creator? Maybe you want to make fine art, maybe you want to make these epic travel films with lots of color grading, lots of slow motion. In that case, this next camera is definitely what you're looking for. And the next camera on the list is the Sony a7 III, also known as the Sony camera that made Canon step their game up. This camera does full HD at both 23 and 60 frames per second and has a slow motion mode at 120 frames per second which is pretty in line with the Canon 90D. However, this is a full frame camera, whereas the 90D is an APS-C camera. And it does 4K at both 23 and 30 frames per second with no crop. And just a quick side note, guys, this is a full frame camera, which has a wider field of view and a shallower depth of field, which gives you a much more cinematic image compared to the 90D, which is a APS-C size sensor. 
The images out of this camera are very sharp, highly detailed in both HD and 4K. There's something about Sony cameras that really make the image pop, especially on mobile screens. And this camera comes with 10 different cinematic profiles, so you can really push and pull your colors and really create a cinematic grade with your image. However, the standard colors right out of the camera are definitely not the greatest. This is definitely a camera you're gonna have to do a lot of tweaking before you throw on YouTube. But if you're the type of person that really wants to create and finesse a cinematic look and do heavy, heavy color grading, this camera will not let you down. The autofocusing system in this camera is definitely set it and forget it. You can absolutely put this camera on a gimbal and even in fast motion, it will intelligently track objects for you. Sony may not have the greatest color science, but when it comes to things like autofocus, they are literally five years ahead of the industry. Two things that really set this camera apart are the in-body stabilization and the low light capabilities. This camera has an actual stabilizer built right into the sensor. So even without a stabilized lens, you're getting much, much smoother footage. If you're doing slow motion or handheld work, this is definitely a camera you should look into because you're gonna get much smoother image than you would with a Canon camera. When it comes to low light, this camera is an absolute monster. You can easily shoot as high as 20,000 ISO, go stargazing, do astrophotography. If you're doing a nighttime shoot, this is definitely the camera you should be looking into. Canon has started to get better with low light in their cameras, but it definitely does not come close to the Sony's. The specs in this camera are amazing, but the one thing that really holds this camera back is the design. Sadly, this camera has a very limited flip screen. It doesn't swivel to the side, so you cannot see yourself when you're vlogging or filming yourself. You have to get an external monitor, which just adds to the camera size. The battery life is abysmal. It's only about 40 minutes at the most. And if you're going to make this into a studio camera, you're really gonna have to add a cage to properly mount an audio system onto this. This camera really isn't something that's made for the studio or where you're talking to it like this. I really recommend this to someone that wants a small, nimble camera with a lot of horsepower. You're a travel filmmaker. You wanna make these epic, very heavily color graded edits, something that's just larger than life. If you wanna do work like that, like you wanna make art, this is definitely the camera to get. If not, this probably isn't the camera for you. For someone that's doing more studio based work, I would definitely stick with the 90D. Are you someone that wants to keep their camera safe and secure while traveling? If so, this camera bag could be perfect for you. Today's sponsor, the Everyday Camera Bag, the camera bag that's designed for everyday life while also keeping your camera safe and secure. So they sent me some of their bags and I personally loved having something I could carry my everyday things in while also having a secure compartment just for my camera. This way, I don't have to buy two bags. The best part is it combines a water resistant design with the camera compartment. This way, my camera's always safe and secure. Plus, this backpack is stylish enough for everyday use. It looks good, it keeps my camera safe, and I love taking it everywhere I go. It's affordable quality that will last and it's something any YouTuber would love to have. The camera bag that's more than just a camera bag. For a limited time, if you use the code RIVER, you'll get 10% off your purchase, but only for a limited time. So be sure to check out the link in the description down below. All right, and the next camera on the list is a bit controversial. It's the Fuji X-T3 and the X-T4. They're essentially the same camera, with the X-T4 getting a slight power bump and a slight redesign for the screen. These cameras actually have the most unique look and are probably the camera that I recommend the most to artists. They actually outspec both Sony and Canon, but the autofocus kinda sucks. If Sony is a 10 out of 10, I would say the Fuji is 6.5, 7 out of 10. Both cameras do HD up to 120 frames per second with the X-T4 going up to 240 frames per second. But the crazy thing about that is it does all of that at 200 megabits per second, which is double what Sony offers. And it does this in 10 bit color. That is absolutely insane and it beats both the Canon and Sony specs wise by a wide margin. And for 4K, it does 4K at 30 with no crop and 4K at 60 with a pretty big 1.8 crop, but the X-T4 only does a 1.2 crop, which is much more usable. And on top of all of that, you get a log profile, a cinema profile, and you get Fuji film emulations. Basically, these are really interesting film emulation looks directly from Fuji, which originally started off as a 35 millimeter celluloid company. So you get all of these interesting, unique, vintage, modern film looks right in your camera. Literally, you don't even have to grade most of these images. They look so good right out of the camera. And if I'm being completely serious, most of the time, the images that come out of this camera look like it was already professionally graded. Hands down, Fuji has the most interesting look when it comes to their image, and it completely outspecs both Canon and Sony. So where's the butt? Well, this camera isn't perfect. 
The autofocus in this camera definitely requires a little bit of patience. It's not quite as good as the Canon and Sony, which pretty much work all the time. I never have issues with those cameras, but this is really more of an artistic camera and most likely you're going to be pulling your focus anyways. Design wise, these aren't really meant to be video cameras. So you're definitely going to have to put a cage on it and add a bunch of other things to make it into a proper studio or cinema camera. But the X-T4 has a few quality of life changes like being able to switch between photo and video mode much faster and a side swivel screen so you can see yourself. And the X-T4 also has in-body stabilization which is a huge win. Ideally, you could use this as a studio camera, you could use this as a vlogging camera, but the real reason to get this camera is if you just want a more interesting look and really set yourself apart visually from your competitors. If you want to have a really interesting look that makes people go like, whoa, that looks very, very different. If you want to make epic, heavily graded work, if you want to make work that's like Beautiful Destination, Sam Calder, or almost have your stuff look like a movie on YouTube, this is definitely the camera to get. Also, quick side note, there's no such thing as a bad Fuji lens. All of the lenses are super expensive and every single one of them is very, very worth the money. Next up, we have the Canon G7X Mark III. I wanted to give you guys a camera that was small and compact, but still gave you all the options of a big DSLR. This camera does full HD at both 24 frames per second, 60 frames per second, all the way up to 120 frames per second, which is pretty impressive for a small compact camera. It also does 4K at both 24 and 30 frames per second. But what's really impressive about this camera is the fact that it has a built-in lens that goes from 24 all the way up to 100 millimeters with an f-stop of 1.8 to 2.8. If that was a lens they put on an actual DSLR, that would be the ultimate lens. You would never need another lens. And the aperture on this lens is more than good enough for shooting low light. Having those resolution and frame rates in a small compact body with this lens honestly gives you so much freedom when creating. It's a small compact camera, but it gives you the benefits and features of a big DSLR that you would normally have to carry around in like two bags. And on top of that it has Canon's autofocus and Canon's color science, which means Everybody's always in focus and everybody always looks attractive. Seriously though, I love Canon's color science. And depending on when you get this camera, make sure to update the firmware because the autofocus in this camera when it first came out wasn't the greatest, but if you install the newest firmware, it is very, very good now. And design wise, the camera's pretty small and compact. Flip up screen at the top, mic jack on the side. Um, even with the lens fully extended, it's not that big of a camera and overall, if you want a compact camera for YouTube, this is definitely a must have. My friend May actually picked up the G7X Mark III just a little under a year ago when she watched my original review and her channel's about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Honestly, I would say that's YouTube approved. This camera does have two drawbacks though. The battery life in this only lasts about an hour and 20 minutes, maybe an hour and a half. It's not the best, but again, compact camera and if you put a mic on top of this, you can't see the flip up screen. So your mic would normally go on top and then the, it blocks the flip screen. That's the two things about this camera that aren't ideal, but again, compact camera. It has so many good things going for it that I'm okay to overlook these two tiny flaws. The G7X Mark III is really recommended for someone that wants to save space, wants a compact camera, and you do a mix of vlogging and content creation, especially if you're someone that sits the camera down, talks to it a lot, this camera would be ideal for you. The only people that I wouldn't recommend this to are people that have a studio set up like this or people that want to make cinematic running gun travel films. This camera really isn't set up for that and really doesn't have the horsepower to accommodate that style. Next up, we have the Canon R and the Canon RP. The reason these cameras are right next to each other is because it's kind of like the big brother and the little brother, or in this case, the big brother and the much more affordable budget friendly brother. Is that a thing? The Canon RP and the Canon R actually have two completely different sensors, but the place that you notice a difference are in terms of codec, cinema profiles, and frame rates. Both cameras do full HD up to 60 frames per second with no crop in beautiful Canon colors, but when it comes to 4K, they both have a pretty heavy crop of 1.8. The Canon RP does 4K at 23 frames per second, while the Canon R is capable of doing 4K at 30 and 23. If you are planning on getting this camera for 4K, I highly recommend that you do not. The 4K has a really massive crop. It throws away most of your sensor and all of your lenses end up being super zoomed in. The 4K in this camera just really isn't worth it and it kind of makes it hard to work with. The 4K is a cute little feature, but it's really not made for full on productions. But here is where you start to notice the changes. The Canon R has all I and IPB codec, which is a professional and consumer level codec, 
while the Canon RP only has the IPB, which is just the consumer level codec. And the Canon R comes with Canon Log built right in in 8-bit or 10-bit with an external recorder, whereas the Canon RP does not have a cinema profile, which kind of makes sense why they didn't put an all eye because you would only really need an all eye codec if you did heavy, heavy color grading, which this camera will not really let you do or is not made to. But both cameras have a lot of flexibility and dynamic range, even in standard profiles. I really felt like I could push and pull colors on both of these cameras. Also, the RP does not have any slow motion options, but the Canon R does do 120 frames per second in 720p. And if you shoot in 720p, don't even talk to me. I cannot talk to you, 720p, you. Other than that, design-wise, these cameras are almost the same. There's small differences, like the fact that the RP has a mode button, which I prefer, and the R has a weird way of getting to it. It's just not the most ideal, but Design-wise, these cameras are both phenomenal, ergonomically well-made. And if you're wondering which Canon camera is right for you, if you're somebody that produces daily content that's educational and you just want a good image, definitely go with the RP. It's cheaper. And if you're not really planning on color grading your image, you're really not gonna wanna spend the extra money on C-Log. But if you're someone that does a lot of high-end product photography, a lot of high-end commercials, maybe your channel has a lot of YouTube ad reads, you really just wanna make it look super pretty, especially if you're someone that talks about tech or products in any way, you're gonna to wanna to shoot those products in a super pretty way. I would definitely go with the Canon R. That C-Log is going to give you that extra 30 to 40% extra horsepower and latitude in your colors. That's really, really gonna help, especially when working with brands. And in case you're wondering, I'm shooting on a $40,000 red 8K helium camera and um, a $2,000 Canon R gets me 80% of the way to my $40,000 camera. The Canon R is magnificent. And when it comes to design, both of these cameras are super well built. The ergonomics are great, great software, great touchscreen. Most of the buttons are in just the right place where you would want them with small changes like the Canon RP having a mode dial and the Canon R has an LCD screen and to switch between video and photo mode, you have to go into the menus, which honestly isn't ideal. But you can read more about that in my full review on the main channel. But both of these cameras are totally good for a professional high paced work environment. Battery life, the Canon R has an LP6, which is naturally a bigger battery. But through my testing, I actually found that the Canon RP had a pretty good decent battery life, even though it's a smaller battery. And honestly, I would say both of these cameras get just about the same amount of battery life. So you don't really need to worry about that. So who should really buy these cameras? And it's kind of an interesting answer. If you want a camera with a solid image, Canon colors, good for video, solid frame rates, slow motion, definitely get the 90D. But if you want your channel to be a little bit more about the art, like maybe you have a tech review channel, you wanna do beautiful product shots, and maybe you're a fashion influencer, and you really wanna make things beautiful, you really wanna make sure your shots pop, you make these outfits look great. In that case, I definitely recommend a full frame camera because with the full frame, you get a wider field of use, your 24 millimeter looks like an 18, your close-ups have that much more depth of field to them. It's a very cinematic look. And the a7 III is also full frame camera. While the Sony colors aren't half bad, I really don't think Sony colors are the type of colors you can just take from the camera, throw them straight onto YouTube with no color grading or just minimal color grading. If you're gonna do Sony, you really wanna get a Sony. If you're gonna be heavily grading your image, using LUTs, using filters, and just really creating a look with it. And if that's your style, definitely the a7 III. But the Canon RP and the Canon R are a little bit cheaper than the a7 III. And if you don't want to do heavy, heavy color grading, I would definitely go with the RP. It's cheaper, you'll still get access to the RF glass, and you just get this very classically beautiful Canon image. And you can just slightly tweak your image here and there. But if you get the Canon R, you'll still get the full frame image, Canon colors, you get all the benefits of having a mirrorless Canon like the Canon RP. But with the Canon R, which is the big brother, you'll get C-Log. That extra 30 to 40% of latitude and flexibility that you're going to get with C-Log is going to make a world of difference if you ever work with brands, if you ever try to do something cinematic, or you really wanna push, like really push your image into something super cinematic where it almost looks like a short film or a movie, you'll have access to that. Also, the Canon R does do 120 frames per second at 720, and as much as I hate 720p, sometimes it's nice to have in a pinch. But overall, these cameras are really versatile because they would work in a studio setup, they would work in a running gun environment, they would work for cinematic filmmakers, they would work for influencers or educators like this. You can pretty much set these cameras up to do anything you want, and I absolutely think these are one of the best deals on this list. 
All right, guys, well, that wraps up our video on the top five YouTube cameras. If you guys have any questions about this whatsoever, hit me up in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to get back to every single one of you. Also, there's a link down below in the description for all the products that we discussed today, so be sure to check that out. Last but not least, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me figure out what kind of content you guys like, what kind of content I should make going forward. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.